Welcome back to our channel and in this week's video I want to talk about keeping you safe and informed. So today we're diving headfirst into a topic that hits close to home for us, hurricane preparedness. You see, living in this tropical paradise comes with its fair share of risks and hurricanes are one of them. But fret not because we're here to equip you with the knowledge and the strategies to stay safe in if and when the storm hits. Today, we're diving into practical tips and strategies that will empower you to prepare for the storm. And by the end of this video, you'll have the knowledge and tools to navigate the challenges of a hurricane with confidence. While the warm climate of Vero Beach is appealing to many, it's important to note that it's also susceptible to natural disasters. Being located on the Atlantic coast, Vero Beach is at risk of hurricanes and tropical storms during the Atlantic hurricane season, which typically runs from June to November. Now, there are a lot of hurricane prep videos out there. This is my basic guide that I put together for you. There's always a level, actually many levels up from this, and you can get into purchasing a ton of different products to make your time without power and running water more comfortable. But I'm not here to sell you items off of Amazon. I just want you to know some of the key necessities to gather or anticipate to get you through a hurricane event safely. I also want to keep it brief so you can get the information and move on with your day. I also want to mention that when it comes to hurricane prep, there are activities that you can do ahead of time as we get into hurricane season. And there are other activities that need to happen immediately prior to a hurricane impact. So let's start with some of the activities that can be done now as we head into the season. So the first thing is to have access to clean water. Make sure you have stored away some bottled water, at least a few days worth of bottled water. So the average person needs about 60 to 80 ounces. So you do the math. That's about four of those 16 ounce bottles per person per day. And if your power is off, it will be hot. So keep that in mind too. The next is purchasing and storing some non-perishable food items. Try to purchase canned items that number one, don't need to be refrigerated and number two, don't need to be heated to eat. This could include things like beans or soup or Chef Boyardee. Look, it doesn't sound appetizing, but in an emergency situation, we can't be finicky. And remember, you're only storing these items for a few months to get you through hurricane season. The idea is that you'll eat the food, and if not, you can always donate it to a local food bank. Another item, if you have it on hand or you want to purchase ahead of time, is a generator with gas. You start up your generator throughout the year. Uh, five to 7,000 watts should be enough to power things like your fridge and a few fans, lights, a microwave. If you want a running AC, you will need to upgrade to at least uh, 10,000 wattage. Some homes do come equipped with a whole house backup generator. The cost of that varies, but the last time I priced them out, they were about $15,000, give or take. It's definitely an investment in peace of mind. So another thing to consider is your roof age and efficacy. After 2006, uh, building codes were updated to incorporate additional roof straps to increase the efficacy of your roof during a high wind event like a hurricane. So if you're unsure if your roof has straps or not, um, one of the things you can do is when you purchase the home, if you still have a copy of that inspection report, you can go back and you can take a look at that inspection report. If you're really worried about it and really unsure, you can always have somebody come out, a home inspector, a licensed home inspector, and they can do something that's called a wind mitigation or a wind it. It's also called a four point inspection and um, will cost you maybe a couple hundred dollars and the inspector can go up on your roof, check out your roof, let you know exactly what you have go going on or what you don't have going on. And then you can make a decision for yourself and what you're comfortable with from there. Another thing that you can prep for and have on hand in advance are flashlights and batteries. All right. So having a, a battery powered flashlight will allow you to preserve your phone battery in the event that the power goes out um, and you don't have the ability to charge your devices. Another thing that you want to pay attention to are window coverings. So these could be steel shutters, plastic shutters, plywood, um, including your garage door. What do you have in preparation in terms of uh, window coverings uh, in the event that a hurricane does roll in, you're gonna wanna have those items on hand instead of scrambling at the last minute with everybody else to try to find items to cover your windows. Set that up in advance, set it up now. It's also less expensive to do so now. 
Okay, now let's get into some of the things that you can do like right around the time of a, an, a weather event. So bringing in any loose items like planters or pots or patio furniture or things in your yard that could become projectiles in a strong wind event. You're also gonna want access for, to water for other things like bathing or flushing the toilet. So filling up the bathtub while you still have power is a must do. That's one of the first things that I do. You're also gonna to wanna to have some kind of sandbags or barrier for your exterior doors. Even if they are hurricane impact rated sliders and doors, I would still have something, some kind of barrier or a significant amount of like toss away towels or like dirty towels that you use for cleaning to barrier the bottom of those doors, just as a safety precaution. All right, here's a couple other um, quick tips that I would do prior to a storm. So take pictures of your home before a storm, take pictures inside and out. In the event that something gets damaged, you always have these for your insurance company. Um, you can use your grill, eat through the items in your freezer first um, as they thaw. So, you know, you don't have to be opening up your fridge a whole lot. You can eat through those freezer items. Another thing that I like to do, I have a lot of photographs and little keepsakes from my young children, things that are really sentimental and valuable to me. And I take those and I put them in waterproof bags. A Ziploc, like a big gallon Ziploc bag will work. If you don't have, um, if you have items that are larger than that gallon Ziploc bag, you can take them and you can buy waterproof bags. Amazon should have you know, some of these supplies and you can put those, just have them on hand and put those keepsakes and sentimental items into those waterproof bags. Those can stay in your home or go with you if you leave, but just having them um, closed up and waterproofed is really gonna give you a lot of peace of mind if those things are very sentimental to you. All right, my last and final tip is a fun one. It's always good to have a backup potty plan in case your drain field floods. So sometimes on a heavy rain day, we will have um, our drain fields get saturated. If you are in a home with a septic tank, with a drain field, having just some kind of backup bathroom plan in case flushing your toilet is no longer an option can really make the difference in your experience during this time. So essentially have a backup before you get backed up. Should you feel the need to as well, evacuation is always an option. It doesn't matter the category of the hurricane. It all depends on your comfortability and what you're willing to weather and not weather through. So evacuation is always an option. There are hotels throughout the state. You can go up into Georgia as far and wide as you want and you're comfortable. That will accommodate your family. They will accommodate your pets. It's a good idea as early as possible. If evacuation is an option for you, start calling around and start getting um, those options secured. And the last thing I wanna say here is, after the hurricane passes, if there's standing water, it's very important for you to understand that the, there is a potential for that water to be charged. If there are down power lines in your area, it, those, how do I wanna say this? The standing water could be charged, electrically charged, and be very unsafe. You could suffer um, an electrical shock event. So even though it looks fun to go play in the puddles, please um, have safety in mind first before you let your children out to go play in the floodwaters. So again, the purpose of this video is not to alarm you. It's not to deter you from moving to Florida or Vero Beach. It's a preparedness um, from the perspective of somebody who lives here, from a realtor who understands houses and how insurance policies work with houses and just generally caring about the people in this community and those people who are looking to move into this community that may um, have an a, you know an aversion to these wind events or hurricane events i just want you to know that you have options to be prepared at whatever level comfortability um, 
like your is right for your family. If you have any other questions and concerns about the area, flood zones, homes that are available, and whatever that landscape looks like, especially as we're going into hurricane season and what that might look like for you if you wanna buy a house during hurricane season, we can answer all of those questions for you. We are happy to be a real estate resource for you here in the Space and Treasure Coast area. Just pick up the phone, give us a call. Um, our, all of our contact information is in the description below. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, leave them in the description below for us. We love to hear from you. And please don't forget, go click that subscribe button so we can deliver more value to you.